I want to talk to you this morning about a topic called peaceful on purpose. Did you get that? Peaceful on purpose. And I want us to look at our scripture today found in Philippians 4, 7. So if you have your Bibles, turn to Philippians 4, 7. And it says this, and the peace of God, oh church, the peace of God, which transcends all understanding. You like that? It transcends transcends all understanding. Listen to what it says it will do. It will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Isn't that incredible? What a promise. It says that the peace of God will transcend all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And I want to talk to you about that this morning, about peaceful on purpose. Peaceful on purpose. If you're going to live in peace, it's not going to happen by accident. Can I tell you that this morning? If you're going to live in peace, it's not going to happen by accident. Every day we have opportunities to get upset, amen? Every day we, have a, we get offended by someone. We live worried. Life happens. We let people get under our skin. People get on our nerves, unexpected bills, family misunderstandings. Do you ever have those around your house? You know, family misunderstanding. When, if we wait for the circumstances to calm down, if we say, then we're going to have peace, then we're going to stop worrying. Hey, can I tell you this morning, you'll be waiting your whole life. It's tough. It's a tough world we live in. It's, a, it's tough out there. But God promises that he would keep us from our difficulties, from our sadness and our pain. He never said we wouldn't go through some storms. He never said there wouldn't be those things that we didn't understand. But he did say this, that he would give us peace. He promises us, church, if we truly trust him, that he'll give us peace in the midst of the storm. Amen? He will bring peace in the midst of the storm, grace in the time of troubles. He calls that the peace that passes all understanding this morning. The peace that passes all understanding is available to you and to me this morning. And we will truly trust and truly believe and put our hope in him this morning. Amen? There is a peace that he can give you that no one else can because he loves you and because he gave his life for you this morning. But you have to, you have to protect your peace this morning, church. We weren't created to live worried and uptight and on edge all the time. This is, a, some, this is the reason so many people, I think, have health issues today. They live worried. They live upset. They can't deal with issues. So many people today never let their minds rest. They never let their minds rest. They're constantly trying to figure it out, worried about their health, upset about their jobs, worried about the traffic out on Old Hickory Boulevard. You know what I'm saying? And they worry about those things, and they let them upset them and it's always on their mind and it's always going the problem seems to get bigger and bigger and bigger like this monster that just overshadows everything and our minds weren't weren't built to do that this morning there's times when it just needs to rest it just needs to rest church it wasn't meant to go all the time do you realize this morning there's a switch in your mind that needs to be turned off every once in a while because you're worrying about so much, you're letting so many things come your way, and there just needs to be a time where you flip the switch and go, whoa, time out. I need a break. I gotta flip this thing off. In, in the scriptures, it says in 1 Peter 5, 7, it says, cast all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. God's saying, man, I don't care how big the problem is, no matter how big the worry is, you can cast it on me this morning. Cast your cares on him because he cares today. You have to learn to turn it over to God. You weren't designed to carry that heavy load. It will frustrate you. It will tear you apart. Learn to lean on the everlasting arms of God this morning. Church, I used to love that song, didn't you? Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, what, come on, help me here, church. What's the, oh, what fellowship, oh, what joy divine. Leaning on the everlasting arms. That's God this morning. He's saying, lean on me. Give me your problems. Give me the circumstances. Let me love you like no other this morning. And here's the key that I've learned. When you rest, God goes to work. Do you realize that this morning? When you rest, God goes to work. But when you go to work, guess who goes to rest? God says, okay, I'll take a break. If you really want to do this, go for it. 
and take a break. I'm going to take a break. Well, God will step back and say, okay, you figure it out. You handle it. I'll take a break. He gives us a free will, remember? And so many times we just jump ahead and we try to figure it out and we try and work it out. And God goes, okay, let me see how that works out for you. And God takes a break. But when we step back and we say, God, you take the problem. God, you bring peace. God will give you a peace beyond all understanding. God, I trust you in my life. I know my life is in your hands. I'm not going to worry. I'm not going to live stressed out. I'm not going to try and figure this out all on my own. I love what Psalms 46.10 says. Oh, get this one, church, and see how much this one would help you. Be still. You know, we like to tell people to be still every once in a while, don't we? Don't you think God's up there going, hey, be still once in a while and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am your God. I love you. I prepared a way for you. I've got a plan with you. Let me go to work. You know, we don't understand why things work out the way they do and why they happen. But God's saying this morning, trust me. I want to be your rock. I want to be your fortress. If you'll take a step towards me, I'll take two steps towards you to help you and to heal you and to get you through. I love the New Living Translation of Psalms 18.2. It says this, church, this morning, the Lord is my rock. The Lord is my rock this morning. It's my, he's my fortress. He's my savior. My God is my rock in whom I find protection. Do you find protection in him this morning, church? He says, I'm your protector. He's my shield, the power that saves me and my place of safety this morning. Do you know there's a safe place in God's arms this morning? There's an incredible safe place in God's arms this morning. I can remember as a kid growing up, and I think I've told you this before, my safe place was my grandma. My grandma hardly ever left the house. She broke her hip in a couple of places, and she wasn't able to get around very much. So she sat at the house all day long, and she loved to cook, and so she cooked for us. She loved the crochet, and she'd make these incredible potholders that she'd give me to take out to all the neighbors. But see, I can never remember my grandmother leaving her front porch. And she had this huge rocking chair that sat over in the corner. And I just knew if I could ever had a problem or I ever had a situation that I couldn't handle or if I needed somebody to understand, all I had to do is get to that rocking chair. And my grandma would be sitting there with her arms wide open and she'd just hug you with everything in her and tell you it's going to be all right. It's going to be okay. And she loved you and she accepted you no matter what. And that was my safe place, church, that I couldn't get to get, wait to get to so many times when I was hurting and I was going through things and I didn't understand. And church, that's the same thing it is with God. He's saying this morning, my arms are wide open. My love for you abounds and is incredible. And if you've got a problem or you've got a situation, run to my rocking chair. And I want to embrace you and I want to love you and I want to bring you hope and I want to be your safe place this morning. God wants to be your safe place this morning, church, no matter what you're facing, no matter what you're going through. In the scripture, David faced all kinds of opposition. People came against him. Enemies were trying to take his life. He could have lived worried. He could have lived stressed out. But he understood this principle in Psalms 23. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. He leads me by the still waters. He leads me by the still waters. One version says it this way, by the restful waters. God's got restful water for you this morning, church. He was saying... Uh, if, if I want to keep my sanity, aren't you have those days where you just want to keep your sanity? He's saying if you want to keep your sanity, the way I protect is my peace that I go to on a regular basis by the still water where I can empty out all my worries. I can empty out all my fears and all my anxiety and all my sadness, all my sadness. In his mind, he knew there was a resting place, not a physical place. I'm talking about a place in your spirit. You need to rest your spirit every once in a while, church, amen? You need to let God renew you, refresh you, and take those problems and take those situations because you're wearing yourself out with them. And God is saying, let me be your peaceful place in your spirit this morning. Let me take that family relationship. Let me take those finances that are weighing you down and burning you down this morning. Trust me, believe in me. I've got a peace that passes 
all understanding. Sometimes you just got to give your spirit a rest. Amen? You got to give your spirit a rest. It can be chaotic all around you. Traffic, people, problems, dramas. But on the inside, there's a rest. There's an assurance that everything's going to be all right. Because God's in charge. And God's got this this morning, church. No matter what you're facing. I love what Isaiah 40, 31 says. And oh, church, don't you like this one? But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. You can renew your strength this morning, church. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. That's the promises you have from God this morning. He said, there's hope in me. You can renew your strength, your trust, your hope. No problem's too big. I'll be there for you. And you can walk and not faint this morning. Sometimes we just want to faint, don't we? Because the load is getting too heavy. And God's saying, I got a place of rest. I got a place of hope. Friends, can I tell you this morning that worry is a thief? Worry is a thief this morning. It wants to steal you and rob you of your joy this morning. It wants to keep you up at night. It wants to rob you of your creativity. You don't make good decisions when you're worried. You realize that? You don't make good decisions when you're worried. If you allow that worry, to, it can keep you from your destiny and your purpose and your plan that God has for your life as well. In Matthew 6, 27, it says this, we can't add one inch to our lives by worrying. If we're so, some of us would be about 23 feet tall this morning. Amen? If worry could do that for us, we'd be tall this morning. But, but the scripture says this morning that don't, you need to stop worrying. Keep letting, quit letting it awake you at night. Keep it from stealing your joy this morning. It's time to slow down and come back to the still waters. It's time to come back to God's presence. Let God work in your life. You need to quiet things down in your spirit and come to a place to, of peace where you can have the right perspectives and you can commune with God again. You realize you can't commune with God the way you need to when your spirit and your soul is at turmoil, church. God wants to bring you to a place of peace. He wants to help you again with the problems and with the situations and give you this joy and this peace that's unspeakable and full of grace this morning for you and your life. But when you worry, you make the problem bigger than God. What you see is the biggest thing in your life. In one sense, that becomes your God. If you worry about your health day and night and it keeps you asleep and that's all you talk about, that's all you think about, you're making that sickness your God this morning. Do yourself a favor. Take the worry off the throne. Take the sickness off the throne. Take the finances and the difficulties off the throne and put God back on the throne this morning, church. That's his rightful place on the throne of your heart and your life this morning because he loves you and he died for you this morning and he wants you to have peace and joy alive and well in your life this morning. Use that same energy, that same energy to thank God that he's still in control and every time you're tempted to worry, turn it around and thank him that he's always taking care of you. Let the worry remind you to switch to praise. Let the worry be the reminder to switch to praise. What happens when we start praising God? Isn't it incredible, this joy, this excitement, this thing that starts happening in your soul when you sing out to him, when you cry out to him, when you repeat those promises from the scripture, God starts changing things. And that's what he's saying, church. Change those things that are happening in your life into praise this morning. Praise him, thank him that you got another day and that life's good and you're alive and you're well. Switch things over to what really matters and, and to good reports. You have to guard your mind this morning, church. You have to. That's where the battle is taking place, is in your mind. And God's saying this morning, think about the good things. Think about my promises. Those are the things we need to focus on and we need to keep our lives involved in. That's where the battle takes place is in your mind. And we have to win the battle of the mind with God's help and God's strength this morning because we can get weary and we can get tired, but God says he'll renew our strength and we'll just trust him this morning because good thoughts, they don't automatically come in the midst of bad situations and the difficult situations. We get those negative thoughts going, oh, my marriage is always going to be this way. We argue all the time like this. 
I'm never going to get past this bad breaks. All the odds are against me, Pastor. I don't make enough. I'm not educated enough. I don't know the right answers. I don't have what it takes to get that promotion. It's easy to believe those lies and start dwelling on them. What if I don't get well? What if the report doesn't come back good? What if I can't make those car payments? Don't fall into that trap this morning, church. Your life is going to follow your thoughts this morning. Do you realize that this morning? Your life is going to follow your thoughts. Do you realize that? If you're worried, if you're anxious, if you're uptight, you're inviting discouragement, you're inviting bad breaks, you're invited negativity, you have to turn your worry into worship this morning. You have to turn your worry into worship. Thank God that he's fighting your battles. Remember what Isaiah 44, 17 says, is thank him. Thank him this morning that no weapon formed against you will prosper today. Amen? There's nothing that will prosper this morning that comes against you if you believe Christ and you stand on his promises this morning. I remember someone asked me one time, I said, Pastor, if you could do one thing over again, what would you do different? You know what came to my mind? I told them I would trust God more. If I could do one thing over, there's some situations, there's some problems in my life, and when some difficult times came, I would trust God more. I wouldn't lose sleep worrying about the budgets, whether we're going to be able to pay the bills, whether I'm adequate enough to be a preacher, whether everybody likes me or not. You know what I've found? That none of that worry has ever helped me move one inch forward. It made me take a lot of steps backwards, but it never helped me move forward. And I wonder in your lives, how many times does that happen? You get all caught up in the worry, and you get so bogged down with it, and it just keeps taking you back and moving you back from all the things that God has planned for you. Jesus put it this way. It says, don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow has enough worries of its own. Amen? It says, don't worry about tomorrow. Just take care of today, because tomorrow has enough worries on its own. God has given you grace for today. Amen? God has given you grace for today. Don't try and figure out the next five years or plan out all the what ifs. I know so many people who spend their lives trying to figure out the what ifs in their lives. And what ifs will depress you this morning. Can I tell you that? The what ifs can. The truth is that if, what, and if a what if does come to pass, God will give you the grace to handle it. Amen? If a what if comes your way, God will give you the grace to handle it. What if the report's not good? What if I get laid off? Then the scriptures promise us this morning that the peace that passes understanding will be right there waiting on you. Amen? The peace that passes all understanding will be there waiting for you no matter what you face, no matter what you go through. God promises his arms will be there to strengthen you for every battle. We may not know what the future holds, but thank God this morning we know who holds the future. Amen? We may not know what the future holds, but we know who holds it this morning, church, and we can put our trust and we can put our hope in him and believe that he's going to see us through this morning, no matter what you're facing. Now, don't miss today worrying about to the, tomorrow. Today is a gift from God. Amen? You were able to get up this morning. You were able to breathe this morning. You were able to walk this morning. You were able to see the sunshine this morning. Well, well maybe <laughs> if, the cloud, if this cloudiness goes away. But God's got a dream. He's got a plan. He's breathed life in you this morning. And today is a gift, an incredible gift from God this morning. And he wants you to realize that. You can never get this day back. Do you realize that? You can never get this day back. It will never come around again. So church, God's saying, make the best of it, church. Don't live worried and all boggled down with the stuff. Trust me, I've got a peace, I've got a plan, I've got a destiny for your life. So trust me this morning. Many things that you're worrying about, <coughs> you realize they're never going to happen. Do you realize that? There's so many things that we worry about that they're never going to happen. And if, and if you realize that, that if it does happen, God's grace is sufficient. And I'm sure we should plan, we should use common sense, but at some point we have to turn it over to God and say, God, you know what's best for me. You have grace for me for every season. And if you clothe the lilies of the fields 
and you feed the birds of the air, how much more are you going to take care of me? He promises us this morning, church, he will never leave us or never forsake us. Amen? No matter what you're going through, he's always going to be there at your right hand, supporting you and lifting you up this morning and taking care of the situation. But it's very freeing. It's very freeing this morning, church, when you learn to turn things over to God. It's so freeing because it's not on you anymore. It's on him to do the promises and the things that he said he would do in the scriptures. You're not supposed to go through life weighed down by worry, by stress, by anxiety. Start lightening the load. Oh, church, could you please go back to the still waters and empty all the stuff out? Let God take over the junk. Let God take over the situation and let him flood your, fear, your spirit and your soul with his presence and the Holy Spirit that wants to work in your life. It's important that every morning you should start off your morning in peace. Amen? You should be able to start your morning off in peace. That peace that passes all understanding. Not stress, not hurry, not rushing around. You need to look at the sunshine and breathe in God's goodness. Thank him for his blessings in your life. Hebrew talks about entering into a rest. That means that you give God the problem. You quit losing sleep over it. You know God's still in control. And this is the, one of the ways that we show God that we trust him is by staying in peace this morning. Church, amen. We show God we trust him by living in peace this morning. And this is the way that God wants us to be. He wants us to stay in peace this morning and trust him and trust that he's working in the, the circumstances, not just when we're up and not when we're just down, but he wants us to stay in a consistency. He wants us to trust in him and rest in him. And as long as you're honoring God, being your best, then he's going to be there, this church. He's going to be there for you. I like this sign I saw the other day. And I like that. I'm going to hang this over my door, I think. It says, Dear Problem. Dear problem, my God is much bigger than you. I think I just need to hang that right over my door before I step out every day and just realize, dear problem, guess what? My God is twice as big as you today, and I can handle anything that comes my way this morning. My message for you today is very simple. Church, you just need to go to sleep. Just go to sleep. Enter into his rest. Quit worrying about everything. Quit trying to figure it out on your own. Turn it over to God. Oh, about six of you are already asleep back there. <laughs> but turn it over to God. Rest this morning in his presence this morning. What's interesting, I, 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 I pastored out in Colorado for a while. My first church, my first youth pastorate was in Colorado Springs. I loved it out there. It was a cool place. We had this family in the church that had this farm way up in the mountains. And my friend would always say, anytime you want to go four-wheeling was about every other day for me. I used to love to four-wheel. He said, come up, ride my four-wheelers, take them out, go anywhere you want to go. So I can remember one day, me and one of the other staff members, we, we took him up on it. And we went up to his farm. He said, there's the four-wheelers, jump on them. I own hundreds of acres around here. You go anywhere you want to go. So I can remember, we took off on those motorcycles. And man, we were just buzzing down the road. And all of a sudden, we took this curve. And I'm serious, church, there must have been 200 sheep right in the middle of the road. And I'm going, what now? So they weren't moving. They just stood there as stubborn as could be. And I can remember, okay, I'm going to show you. So I put that four-wheeler in neutral, and I just started revving it up with everything I had. And they just kind of turned around and looked at me like, yeah, so what? And I can remember I started making all the noises I could possibly think of to scare those sheep. I was yelling at them. I acted like a bear at one point. I was growling at them and everything else. And they just turned around again and looked at me and said, what in the world is this stupid man doing? You know, what in the world is this stupid man doing? And church, can I tell you this morning, we can be like that in the midst of a storm because we know this morning. And Jesus says, I'm sending you out as sheep among the wolves. And sheep are very calm, very peaceful animals. They don't get upset. I've never seen a sheep have a nervous breakdown of you. I've never seen a sheep that's pacing back in the fields all stressed out, worried about things or uptight. They're always at ease. They're always at ease. And what's interesting is sheep are basically defenseless animals. They can't run fast 
Have you ever seen a sheep run fast? They don't have sharp teeth and they really can't kick very hard. Do you realize this morning it's because they depend on the shepherd to take care of them. The shepherd keeps them from danger. The shepherd protects them from wild animals. The shepherd tells them where to go. They don't worry. They know as long as they follow the shepherd, everything's going to be fine. Everything's going to work out. And we can take a lesson from the sheep this morning. Amen? We need to realize this morning to stay in peace. The good shepherd is watching over you and me this morning, church. The God who knew you before you were born. The God who breathed life into you. He's going to guide you. He's going to protect you. The scripture says that his eye is on the sparrow. And church, if his eye is on the sparrow, guess what? He loves you twice, three times, a million times more. And his eye is on you today. Yes, there's going to be some wolves in your life. There's going to be some attacks things you don't understand. Can I tell you this morning, church, don't fall apart. Don't start complaining. Don't you dare give up. Don't you dare give up this morning. Because be like the sheep. Stay in peace. You don't have to run. You don't have to get all worked up. The good shepherd will fight your battles this morning for you. He wants to be there for you. He will lead you into the green pasture. He'll restore your soul. You may go through some valleys and some difficult seasons. You don't have to fear evil. For the Lord your God, the good shepherd, is right there with you. Amen? The good shepherd is right there with you. So church, come back to the still water. You've worried about that problem long enough. It's time to give your mind a break. It's time to let go. Some people never let their minds rest. Man, I know people that go on vacation to rest their body but they're still worrying. They never let their mind rest. They just let it go on and on. Like I've told you before, that doesn't move you one inch forward when all you're doing is worrying. Friends, don't let that rob you this morning. If a thief comes into your house every week and he steals all your groceries and takes all your food and all the things out of your, out of your drawers, your furniture, it won't be long till you get fed up with that and say, I've had enough. I'm gonna take care of that rascal. Well, church, it's the same thing in your soul and in your life and in your heart this morning. It's time to say, I'm going to stop this. I'm going to stop worrying. Don't go another five years letting worry rob you of your joy, rob you of your peace. Put your foot down and say, this is going to be a new day. No more worrying for me. I'm going to guard my heart. I'm going to guard my soul. And I'm going to go to the still waters. And I'm going to live in peace from now on. Remember, when you rest, God goes to work. When you rest, God goes to work. But when you work, God goes to rest. And he's saying this morning, church, go to the still waters. Trust me and believe me. And whatever's bothering you, whatever's tempting you to worry about it, I'm asking you to take it off the throne and put God back on the throne. Make him bigger. Use that same energy to thank him for working in your life. If you do this, I believe and declare you'll experience peace that passes understanding. No matter what's happening on the outside, on the inside, you can have rest this morning to overcome every obstacle and accomplish every dream because God has created you to live in peace and to live with a purpose this morning, church. God made you in his likeness and in his image this morning, and he wants you church if you're struggling with something this morning to go back to the still water and trust him and let him renew you and refresh you and bring joy and hope and peace he came that we may have life and have it what church abundantly that's the savior you serve this morning he came to give you life so that you can have it abundantly but we got to trust him And sometimes we just got to go back to the still waters and say, God, this situation, this problem, it's too big for me. I'm so tired of handling it. I'm so tired of it keeping me down and stopping me from being all that you died for me today. And this morning, I just got to go back to the still water and let God refresh me and renew me and bring me back to where I need to be with him because he's got a plan and he's got a purpose for you and for me. But church, so many times, We're letting worry and problem and stress keep us from being all that he died for us to be. He's got a plan. He's got a purpose for you and for me. 
And first of all, it has to start by trusting him, amen?